the, and we'll take questions at the end. The way you enter a question is by entering a, uh, uh, the Q&A tab at the top of your live meeting frame. You can type in a question, and at the end we'll take those uh, one at a time. You can ask one question, and then when that's answered, we delete it from the queue, then you can ask a, a different question. Um, it's just sort of a limitation of the system, but that's, that's how we'll conduct the, uh, the webinar today. After the webinar is completed, uh, in the coming days, it will be posted online to our uh, National Civil Service Center YouTube channel, and uh, that's been included in the webinar announcement. You can find that at the bottom of the, annou of the announcement. With that, I'm going to turn it over to our presenter, George Teachman. And this is the first time I've uh, done a webinar. Uh, it's a little bit different than what I ordinarily like. It's tough to read the faces, but you can't see the faces. Um, so I, I'm George Teachman. I've been here at the center since the uh, well, end of 2009, part of my second tour here. I was a, a mapper in Michigan and snowboard tour in Florida. And then during the reorganization in 95, I ended up as the liaison to the U.S. Army. Stayed there for 15 years and, and came back in 2009. Uh, a lot of things have changed, and that's good. One of the changes that we're going to look at now is some uh, relatively high tech for soil scientists in the field. <clears throat> we're going to look at a digital pen and using pen enabled or the term I have coined as penanized forms. Okay, the first thing's first. You don't need special paper. This is a, probably the most common question I've received. Uh, we'll go through what you do need, but special paper isn't one of them. Now, this, as an application, this is primarily for field data collection. Uh, you can collect information on paper maps or forms, which is what this uh, webinar will focus on, is using the pen and the forms. And then you can import the data from the pen and into Excel for us, soil survey applications. And uh, for something else, I'll just put that on the slide later. Uh, I, I think it's possible that there are not only soil scientists in the audience that will be using and recognize some of these, what I'm talking about for soils data collection. But the forms are also used by uh, folks who are doing wetland determinations, and we'll discuss that as we go along. So it's a mixed audience out there, at least I hope it is. So basically what we're doing is we're taking analog data, that's your handwritten data, and directly into digital data without stopping at the keyboard in between. You use the pen, the digital pen, as if it was a real pen, that can write in ink, unless you're working for the CIA and they use a toothpick instead of ink. And except as a backup, the paper map, or the form in our case, and ink becomes superfluous, and I just wouldn't throw them away, I'd keep them as backup. The analog data is then recorded by the pen and downloaded to the computer, and then imported into an Excel penized form. And it looks just like any other Excel spreadsheet. Well, that's not quite true. Now, there are some requirements, and one of which is not special paper. Uh, there are basically two pieces of hardware that you need. You need a digital pen, and it's accompanying, accompanying uh, docking port, and you also need a supported color laser printer. I'll go through each one of these. Now, the pen is easier to carry and easier to use in the field than a tablet or a laptop computer. And it's basically a shortcut to the user um, moving digital data. In, uh, it's a shortcut between compared to manual, manually digitizing and data entry. I'll get it right yet. Now, the printer, it, it 
has to be a, uh, at least a four-color printer. It has to be a dip, uh, has to be, has to be able to accomplish, has to be able to utilize PostScript uh, technology. It has to be a pretty high resolution, at least 600 dots per inch. And it has to be uh, pretty full on memory. 256 megabytes is a minimum, and at that point, you'll notice, if you, if you try to print some of these forms, you'll notice some real degradation in time. There is a list of supported printers available, and I've gone through and contacted almost every slow survey office in the country, and I only found one or maybe two slow survey offices that didn't have a supported printer in the building that they're located in. If you don't have a supported printer, there are ways around it. You won't like them, but there are ways around it. Uh, as far as the paper is concerned, you're going to be using the A2 and A4 size paper. Basically, that's letter and legal size paper and um, 11 by 17, which is considered Lead, ledger, or maybe tabloid. And to be honest, most of the forms fit in that 11 by 17 category. Now, one of the other requirements of software, you're going to need something called Captures for Excel. I know it kind of looks like Capture X, and that's how I said it for a long time. But the, the vendor stresses that it's called Captures. So, anyway. It's captured for Excel version 1.2.1, which is just an add-in to Excel. You also need Pen Manager version 3.4. Both of these are CCE certified. Both are supported for Windows XP and Windows 7. The workflow is pretty simple. You print the form with the, the Captures Print tool, which is part of Excel. You fill out the form with a digital pen. Now, you can either do this in the field or in the office. Uh, then you import the pen data into Excel. Then you do quality control on the data. And then you can either directly <coughs> import it into NASIS, or you can save it as supporting documentation for those forms that I've created so far that uh, the data is not in NASA's, at least at the present time. And one of those is the wetland determination forms. Now this is an example of one of the forms that I've created. It's a penonized field note form. I'm not sure what I can say about this, except that it uses four different kinds of fields. It'll use a date field, and this really just a text field that's it's, uh, not supposed to be written in by you. It's a concatenated field that gets populated when you populate other fields. In, the, in this case, the site ID is populated with year, state, county number, uh, the fifth three-digit county code, and whatever pet out number that goes in there. It's also three digits, so Head on number one would be 001. This is the same format that you're supposed to be doing this for years. Um, let's see, and there are some numeric fields. And there, if this was live, I'd show you the drop downs. But this is the MLRA, it's you know, drop down choice list. There are a lot of drop down choice lists in here. Uh, and then there are like some, some uh, freeform text fields. And the, the capture software does a pretty good job of uh, recognizing what you write. And you can see that in a few minutes. Now, if you remember, the first step was to print the form. Well, you may be tempted to go to the office button, print, press print, or press your print icon, well, don't do that. It won't work. Well, it'll work, but you won't be able to use it as a, as a form to import into NASA. You have to print it using the captures print, which is right 
right here on the captures icon, or captures ribbon, shows up after captures for Excel version 1.2.1 is loaded. So when you print that, or when you click on that icon, you get a dialog box that looks pretty much like this. You need to choose your supported printer, and then you put in the number of copies you want, and you hit OK. Pretty much all there is. Um, you notice these two green bars, those are pattern. It's basically the dot pattern that gets printed on each sheet as it goes through the printer. All of your Soil Survey Office pens that you currently have come with a four pattern. Uh, and that's basically eight and a half by eleven. And well, I don't have very many forms that fit them on that size paper, so you're going to want to go through the, the exercise of getting more pattern and, and make sure you get A2. Um, it's pretty straightforward what, what you need to do. You just follow prompts, and if that doesn't work, well, then you call the ADAPS tech support, and they're very responsive, and it usually happens while you're online. Now this is the difference between printing with captures and printing normally with Excel. On the left, this is, a, this is printed through using the captures icon the correct way. And on the right, it is if you went to, if you just press the, your print icon on, on your, uh, printer, that, that bar is called the vast bar, or when you went through the normal printing routine see that there's, it looks like a, you know, it's gray versus the, the white. Well, if you look real close, this gray is millions of tiny dots. And the pen will actually, as you're, as you're writing in each one of these fields, the pen is sensing dots at 75 pixels, uh, 75 times a second. So it's actually following the pen movement and turning that into something that it can read. So after you've filled out the form in the field or in the office, it's time to import the data from the pen. And as soon as you dock the pen, the computer will sense it. And if you're, and if you're not in Excel, it will start Excel, and it will pull up the file that you printed. And then this captured icon will show up, and it will stay there until you're done. And depending on how much data you have in there, it's usually pretty quick. This dialog will come up, and it will tell you how many pages you just downloaded. Click on the yes, and after, our, after it's all imported, you're going to go back to the captured ribbon, and you'll see that the, you'll have a workbook, which is a file name, pen data. Uh, this is an expandable list. It could be one to a hundred or more. And to import it, Basically, you can import all of it, all of all the data that you downloaded, or you can try to decide individually which ones to import. Well, uh, it's probably just best that you import all, since you're not going to be doing 100, probably, before you come back to the computer. After you do that, it's going to take a little while. It'll if uh, electrons would hum and whir, it would hum and whir and chunk along. And depending upon the complexity of the form and how many forms you've imported, it could take it could take a few minutes. And while that is happening, you will, you will notice that green on all my forms, that green worksheets, 
street cab worksheets are being inserted into the workbook with the name of the uh, the name of the the first worksheet in the book and then the number after. And you'll notice that it, it comes in as if you had typed it in. This is the result of the optical character recognition algorithm in the software that it uh, tries its best to convert what you wrote into what it thinks you wrote. Now, a lot of these, the, the forms or the fields that have choice lists, like uh, boundary distinctness and boundary topography, <coughs> it will pick it will try to uh, match what's in the choice list to what you what you put in here. If this is blank, and I've never seen it blank, but they tell me that if this is blank, you couldn't match what you wrote against one of the codes in the list. <laughs> if it's a, a numeric field, it'll put what it thinks you typed in, or what you wrote, and if it's like a letter A, you use the wrong field, it won't put A here, it'll be blank. Or you might try to uh, match it to a number. Some of them are uh, pretty strange matches. kind of wonder how it ever came up with that. But the fields that are text fields, uh, those can be problematic. Uh, basically, you have to remember your uh, penmanship classes and print me. And after it's done, it'll tell you how many pages in the report. But the green tabs will show up as, as the import happens. And after it's imported, There's a uh, icon on the captures ribbon that says ink. And if you click on it, what you actually wrote will show up. Now, this, this doesn't match the previous slide, unfortunately. But it has some interesting effects that I wanted to show. <coughs> Notice that the pet on ID, most people can read that. It's 2013MI031311. Now, this field on new forms is one of those yellow fields. But if you deviate from the standard naming convention, you can write. Now it's time to begin the QC process. And you can see now this, this form, this slide corresponds to the previous slide as far as the data is concerned. And you'll notice, this, I don't know how big you guys are seeing this, but you can see that it, it took, it found a two, and it thinks this zero with the slash is O, and this is an I. Lowercase m, that's probably right. This it brought in as an i. This is an o. Three i, three i i. Well, that's wrong. You get a chance to fix that. But I just wanted to show you that in these text fields, you should be as precise as you can. Now you'll notice that uh, there are some kind of strange looking numbers here. did a pretty good job with my horizon nation. And I put in uh, 10 T to 20, and 20 to 10,000. Now, that's wrong. And then I only picked up the 10 T, it made 101. The, what is that, what is it, it was 20. It just recognized that as a zero because it didn't recognize the two with two. It, it took 10,000. Now, all 
these fields have data validation built into them. And the, the valid high number for depth is 9999. So it's not catching any data validation errors at this point. It will show up, however, on this slide. The data validation on Excel, in Excel, on the data ribbon, there's a data validation icon, and you can choose to circle the invalid data, which is what I did here. And it uses the data validation rules that I put in place to determine if a field is wrong. Like 14. Well, the maximum pH we can have is 13. So it found out it turned that as an error. And I'm not real sure. Sometimes, sometimes you have to wonder about why it thinks it's an error. But 10,000 realize it being not, not being right. So then you come over to this review pane, and you go through the, you go and click on the fields that are in red, and the cell value will show up. And it'll give you a decent guess at what it should go in there. But this one is really 1.4. So you can either type the right value in here, or you can type the value right on the form itself. <clears throat> now, these uh, purple oval or rounded boxes uh, are not part of any data validation or part of captures, but they are required fields uh, to import into masses. The date, the user site ID, and user pet on ID are all pretty well known, but because of a bug in the import routine in NASA's, it's required that you put something in the transact ID field. Now, when you get it into, when you get it into NASA's, go back into the kind of ID field and null it out. But in order to get it into NASA's, it something has to be. <clears throat> Here's some examples of what handwriting, what it thinks it is, and what you need to correct it is. This is just examples of uh, what to look for. Some of the key things that, are, that we've done to make the, the OCR, or the optical character recognition, work for us, given us high quality data, is the form design, setting up the field validation rules, um, especially the concatenation where the field is really a mixed alphanumeric field like user site ID, user pet on ID. I've tried to design the fields so that it's obvious what they're supposed to be in there. And one of the big things is that the fields are big enough to completely contain the handwriting. As, a, as an example, color, color. On the blue 232 card, this would all be one field, 5Y44. Well, that's a mixture of characters and numbers, and it would never never get it right, you spend more time fixing it than anything else. So these are all choice lists. And then when it goes into, and it goes into NASA, it goes in as these anyway, as these pieces of parts. That's one of the things we did for compatibility your fields. And now, like I said before, penmanship will Good penmanship will reduce the amount of errors you need to correct. Now, <clears throat> oddly enough, the keys for effective quality control are the same as good optical character recognition. Cell formatting, validation criteria, numeric ranges, text lengths, choice lists, test expressions, 
those of you who are old enough to remember Unix probably can recall that bullet out of the, the depths of your memory. <clears throat> you didn't like them then. You, I don't like them still. I don't use them very often, but sometimes they can be useful. You'll never know which ones it is. It's more of a design feature than anything else. Now, you've done the well, you've done the, uh, the printing, uh, the writing on it, the import, the quality control. For the soils forms, there are a few things you need to do. You need to run two macros out of each form, clean styles and rename, rename build form, and you have to do them in that order. Today is too short to tell you why you have to do that, but suffice it to say, some of, the, some of them are required because of Excel, because of what Microsoft did or didn't do. And then, when that's done, you need to run this error check. And this checks maximum and minimum ranges. It, it, it checks uh, some internal, um, like a bottom depth being less than a top depth, that kind of thing. And as you're going through, once you press that button, it'll tell you when it found an error. It'll tell you which field the error is in. Unfortunately, in my, probably my lack of understanding, you have to wait until the initial review completes before you can start correcting the errors. But eventually, you get to the point where it'll say no errors are found, and you can import it into NASA's if it's a soil spawn. So basically, you have a digital pen, you use it, it goes into Excel, and it goes into NASA's. Now, just how useful is this thing really? Um, I have some anecdotal evidence. Paul Fennell, you, you can read that. He was a, a doubter at first, but for one of his uh, SDJR uh, chores, he had to enter some TUDs into NASCs, the pen onto the NASCs. And he found out that using the Penonite 232 form was faster than using NASCs, which is a surprise, or pen on PC. Uh, a soil survey office reported that entering a pen onto the NASCs is two and a half times faster using the Penonite forms than any other way. And they did a cost-benefit thing, and it turned out for a three-person office over a year's time, they'd save $11,000. Now, resource soil scientists working with uh, wetland determinations found that you could save uh, one and a half hours of office time per wetland determination. <clears throat> so all these things reduce the amount of time you need to spend in the office, which means you increase the amount of time you need to spend in the field which is where most soil scientists I know prefer to be. Now, when the pens came out and they were delivered to your soil survey office, and every one of you got one, uh, it was in December of 2011, in the midst of RACA, so they weren't available. They weren't, they weren't in a position to use them at first. And really, there weren't any forms available to use them for or use them with. But we've hopefully taken a big chunk out of that problem. Uh, for the soils, data that goes that can be imported to NASA's. Uh, there are four 232 forms. There's one for organics, one for mineral, uh, one for sub soils. <coughs> and Soil Survey Office Lab uh, data can be collected in imported into NASA's. We have a generic field note, which probably won't be useful all over the country because it notes change from, from year to year and from survey office to survey office. There's a transect form, and then there are for the dynamic soil properties uh, projects. There's a penetrometer form and a soil stability form. And the wetland determinations <coughs> The 
Corps of Engineers, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, <coughs> has developed weapon determination forms for 12 regions that uh, the NRCS folks that are doing weapon determination use. Uh, I, create, I was able to create, with significant input and help by a soil scientist in uh, Idaho, We were able to convert those Corps of Engineer forms to a pennantized form. And she takes this form into the field, writes on it, brings it back in, imports it into the computer, and puts it into the pennantized, into Excel, which she claims is, is faster than transcribing a handwritten report our handwritten, our hand filled out field, fields, typing it into the computer, doing the, the QC, and especially when it's supposed to go into NASA's, but it's useful as, well as needed, as uh, support documentation for the determination. And I, I think the Air Quest form. Great Plains Farm and the Midwest Farm. I know people have downloaded <coughs> from the site. So hopefully they're being they're being used. Now the ESI or Ecological Site Inventory, um, depending on future decisions, may may end up in NASA's. The vegetation data may end up in NASA's and. As a result, there were some questions on how it could be, how that data could be quickly put into NASA's. So I created a couple of, of forms based on some forms that were sent to me from the states. I created a California LOA form and an ESI course plot form. They're both being looked at and reviewed by the various and sundry people. Uh, you've seen the soil, the soil form. I thought I'd throw up a couple of pictures of a weapon determination form. <clears throat> this is the Arid West. This is the, the top of the Arid West first page, and the top of the Arid West second page. The Arid West form is a, one of those legal size forms. It's two pages. forms come from? Well, there's two types of forms. There's the ones where the data is imported into the corporate database, like the soils forms, 232 field notes, and perhaps the ESI. And then there are ones that are used as supporting documentation, like the wetland determination forms. Um, there's a mapping and description form that I've built for uh, uh, mapping and description analysis or documentation for California and perhaps some other program areas. Um, we've had, let's see, at the Animal Health, the Animal Plant Health Inspection Service, service uh, APHIS has uh, consulted us on perhaps using pennantized forms or digital pen. The easement division has talked to us about developing uh, a tool for them. Uh, CDSI is actually also interested in perhaps pennantized forms as an interim step towards their ultimate goal. Now, who can create a form? Well, anyone with captures for Excel can create a form. Uh, so, anyone with a digital pen in NRCS can also has captures for Excel, so they can create a form. Now, the import a form into NASA requires a NASA import script, which reduces drastically the number of people who can, who can uh, bring data, who can write, who can capture data and bring it into NASA. Currently, there are, I like to say there are about 1.5 people who can write a NASA import script, and I'm the 0.5. That is a requirement, and uh, it's no 
easy thing to do to, to learn how to do this. <coughs> now, those types of those farms that provide program support have fewer requirements. And their data's not going anywhere. They just create the form and do the necessary um, back end stuff in Excel, and it's, uh, it's done. Uh, I am working on a Soil One form. The state would like to capture all the historical data. So it, it'll be, I'll consider that a program support form, although there's a lot of data on there that could go into NASA's. Now today, I have acted as a penalized form czar. I, I, don't, I don't do these blind or alone. Every form I have, I have made, I've made with the help of a, at least one, usually more than one experienced user of the existing paper form. Uh, I've put a, a plug in. If you have a form that you need, just let me know and especially send me a copy of the paper form. You can either send the PDF or scan it and send it just about any type. And then I'll look at it and uh, we'll discuss what needs to be done, where, it, where it's going to go, and if you're willing to act as a resource. We'll get it done. Get it done. That's a Nebraska saying. I'm learning. And you betcha. Uh, you betcha. I learned it up in Upper Michigan. The picture was a little different. Now, support. Uh, there's kind of three different areas of support. With the, with the USDA Connect community, there is a digital pen and forms community. It's a moderated community. You can request to join, or you can, you can go there and, request, and press the request to join button. Or you can just send me an email, and I can add you as a member if you choose to be a member. Uh, there are forums where members can submit questions and hopefully answers down the road. And this is where all the files about the various forms that I've created, and documentation for uh, using the digital pen, and how to do the canonized form route uh, is stored. Or you can contact me, and in the, as a last resort, you can contact ADAPT's technical support or any one of these. They are very responsive. Now, this is a screenshot of the USDA Connect Digital Pen and Forms community page. <coughs> In a pre-summary, it's a familiar low-tech data collection system, pen and paper. It's a shortcut to usable digital data compared to manual entry. It's less expensive than uh, any other piece of electronic gear that you'll have in the office. Primarily because you didn't pay for this. Every social security office already has the hardware and software, and the license for the same are paid for by the SSC. Now, the future really depends on you guys. <clears throat> if there's a demand for it, then the forms will be there. Currently, the Social Survey Division through NSSC <coughs> centrally funds yearly license fees for about 200 pens in software. However, unless there is a significant rise in the number of users, we may have to do a strategic reallocation funds mark for their renewal. Now, the SSRA and SSD leadership support deployment of this tool as a, just another tool in the toolbox. It's not the answer for every place, but it'll work in a lot of instances. And it'll be more time in the field and less time in the office. However, the funds are real tight right now, and every activity in the agency is viewed as a source of 
class series. And the current level of licenses costs about 60000 a year. Now, if you feel that you need this tool, and if you feel staff, please touch your state office or MO leader. Yeah, MO leader, no. Or if you're an MO leader or a state office staff, let your field know. But I need to know soon. Because the, uh, the time of year and the budget cycle coming up soon, that will that will re, uh, reveal how much end-of-the-year funding we have and for how much support we will be able to provide in the way of license fees for next year. Basically, we're at a point in, in funding where if we lose licenses because you're not ready to use them or whatever, uh, it'll be harder to plus up down the road and if, we, and if we just continued um, the current system. Now, the folks doing the weather determinations who wish to use a digital pen and forms but don't have a pen at this time, we may be able to uh, reassign pens from soil survey offices that decided not to use the form. And in that case, I believe uh, NSSC will still uh, fund those licenses. So your state office won't have to find the funds for them. In fact, just about the only expense in this whole outfit, in this whole, uh, in this whole thing, for lack of a better term, it is the special paper that if you are writing in the rain, the pen will work in the rain. It works on a special paper called special paper called write in rain paper. Um, we won't supply you with that, uh, but it's on GSA schedule, and we can get you the information necessary to uh, order it. Or if you know somebody in Alaska, they've been using it for 30 years, and they're regular, ongoing, every day out in the, out in the wet wildlands, no taking. So they'll, they'll be good advice for, for chairman. Now we come to the time where it's questions. There doesn't appear to be very many questions. <coughs> well, we'll give people <coughs> online a chance to key in their questions. And during that time, I'll take questions from here in the room with me at the center. So uh, Dan's going to come up and ask a question, come up front where we can get his voice recorded. I'm thinking specifically on wetland determinations. How durable are those pens? I mean, will they be? Will they take being dropped in the front? Yeah. Uh, the the example that their vendor likes to, to use is of a, a field crew who lost a pen while they were doing some snow research. Uh, it, they dropped it in the snow and couldn't find it. They came back the following year. It was a uh, one of these like on one of our scan sites or permanent site, they came back to the site that after the snow was gone, they found the pen, they charged it, and all the data was still in it, and it was downloaded into their computer. Thank you. We've got a question online here. Is there a user's manual available, and where do we download the forms? Uh, the user manual and the forms are all on the USDA Connect digital pen and forms community in the files section. Or you can always contact me directly and I'll, I can send you this thing. Okay, another question. If we do not have the printer, can we map to a printer at another office and have them mail the forms to us? Okay, this is where it gets a little confusing. You can if your computer, <coughs> see, the, the problem is the pen knows the computer that the form was printed from. So it, when you dock the pen, it 
should be on the form, on the computer that the form was printed from. So in, in this case, though, if you can map to a machine in another office and they can send them to you or bring them to you, that should work because you're still using the same computer to dock your pen to. The, well, there is another um, scenario which isn't quite so simple. But it, even if your computer can't print to a, a supported printer, somebody else's computer can, well, that other computer has to have captures for Excel on it also, and yours does too to in order to use uh, data when it comes back. Now you can, did, you can set the capture software, pen software up so that when, it, when you dock it, it will, the data will be sent to this other office's email, somebody in the other office's email. They can import it into the computer that printed the form. It'll import directly to an Excel file, and they can send you the Excel file. Then you can do the QC on it and do the importing in the NAS or whatever that way. A lot of steps in that one, but it can be done. When you download this information off the pen, does that empty the memory in the pen, or do you have to, is that a separate step to empty the contents of the pen? The, once you dock the pen, it basically dumps what it has. It's an all or nothing affair. And once it dumps what it has, it's empty. You don't have to go through any special process of erasing what's in the pen memory. As a practical matter, printing these forms off, does the capture software allow double-sided printing, or do we need to print uh, separate sheets for each page? Uh, that's a question I asked the DAPS, exactly, and for reasons that you probably haven't realized yet, but a DAPS, the answer is you shouldn't do that because the pen will recognize the dots on the other side of the double-sided, double-printed piece of paper. So it's one page. I've, I've arranged the forms so that it's one page per form. No. Well, you don't have to do double-sided. Well, you don't do double-sided. The 232 forms are four pages. Four 11 by 17 are, if you print really nice, small, uh, legal size. But it's going to be four pages. And it takes quite a while for the 232 forms to print. It's not only how to print the form itself, but it has to print those millions of little dots. So it, it takes a while. So if you're going to print, like I did one day, 20 forms, it took almost an hour. Is there space on the form for uh, notes, like pen-on text notes, horizon text notes? There are horizon text notes, and then there is a site text note. I haven't had a request for a pen-on text note. Here's a, a comment uh, from Waverly. The pens work great for teleworking. We take a big stack of forms and pedons to be entered for SGA, STJR home or wherever our telework location is. It frees, up, frees us up for months in the office of uh, STJR work. Great. I hadn't heard about that. Are there any plans for other forms for ecological site inventory, for example, double sampling used by NRCS planners. Yeah, there are plans to create <coughs> as many forms as we need. The, especially for ESI inventory, there's a variety of methods and we'll create the forms necessary to uh, handle those methods. You just don't know which forms they are just yet. Or I don't know. Maybe Curtis or Susan knows, but I don't know yet. And there's a comment here about, uh, you know, with the 
being so exact on these uh, documents, you know, particularly with certified wetland determinations, they can be very detailed and, and tricky as well as hazardous for the agency. The wrong thing gets written down. So the QC process needs to be critical uh, when you're reviewing what's, what's on your form. Can't disagree with that. The wetland forms are a little bit easier to QC than the soil forms. A lot of the wetland forms are check boxes. They're easier to QC. But, but that person is right. Uh, it's important to, to get the quality control. Has there been any progress on the GIS mapping capabilities? That's a different piece of software called Captures for ArcGIS. Um, there are two licenses per MO for that software. Uh, I don't. I'm not involved in, in that side of the operation. I know it's been used, uh, but I don't know anybody who's actually using it now. And George, I know that some of the the products you can find online for, for digital pens, they come with a microphone. Is there any uh, future application of, of uh, speech to text with this technology? Um, I think the answer is yes for those operations that are inside. Uh, we have tried in the past individuals in the agency taking little tiny tape recorders out and describing the pit that way. But when they brought it back, they listened to it, all they could hear was the wind. So the wind gets in the way, <laughs> even when you don't think there's any wind, apparently. Well, we've exhausted the questions on our online group. Is there any questions remaining from here in the in the room with me? If not, I'll thank our speaker, George, and this concludes our webinar. Thanks, Thanks all. Guys.